morning and praise the Lord. First of all, I would like to thank God for God giving us this wonderful morning to praise God. So before I start uh, youth service, I would like to pray. Let, let's close our eyes and look to Lord in prayer. Dear God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your love and kindness. And thank you, Lord, for keeping us alive, O oh Lord. In this morning, I submit your mighty hand for each and every one who are present in this moment in this, and here, Lord. You bless us and guide us, Lord. Now we are going to praise your name. So please be with us and guide us, O oh Lord. Whatever we are going to praise your name and listen your words, O oh Lord. Uh, I submit your mighty hand, Lord. I pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all stand and praise God uh, through singing uh, Majesty.
काम कर गए पाप मेरे साप मेरे चलते बन गए तुम दिल में ऐसे बस गए जिंदगी भर के लिए राजा बन गए जीवन में ऐसा काम कर गए पाप मेरे साप मेरे चलते बन गए Psalm number 47 let me read for all of us clap your verses 1 and 2 Psalm number 47 verses 1 and 2 let me read for all of us clap your hands all your nation shout to God with cries of joy for the Lord most high is awesome the great king of all the earth through this scripture may God bless all of us Let us continue to sing uh, Father in heaven Father in heaven how we love you
presence in this time, O oh Lord, Lord. This time I submit into your mighty hand each and every one, O oh Lord. Now we are going to listen your word, O oh Lord. Especially I pray, O oh Father, all of us, O oh Lord, whatever we will listen, we can able to understand and we can able to apply in our daily life, O oh Lord. Rest of the time I submit into your mighty hand, O oh Lord. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and thank and praise God for this opportunity to be here this morning to worship the Lord with you and to share the word. Before, the, before we go into the word of God, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, you thank you for the time that you've given us, Lord, to be in your presence. Lord, thank you for the time that you've given us, Lord, to be in your sanctuary. Lord, as we're going to meditate on, on your word, Lord Jesus, speak to us, Lord. Speak to us, let your servants hear it. Let you increase and we decrease. In Jesus' name, Amen. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank and praise God for this opportunity to be in the sanctuary, to worship with you and to share the word. Before we go into the word of God, let's close our eyes and look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the time that you've given us, Lord, to be in your sanctuary. Lord, we are here to meditate on your word, Lord Jesus. Speak to us. Speak to us, Lord, let your servants hear it. Let you increase and we decrease. Let every word that comes forth, let it be yours, Lord Jesus. Take control. Let your name be glorified and unto us. In Jesus' name, Amen. What could be in our hearts when we are called a man of the God's own heart? The moment I said man of the God's own heart, you would have guessed from whose life I'm going to talk about. But what made God call David as a man of the God's own heart is one of the um, one of the questions that lingers in me all the time. And I kept on meditating on that. And that is where God started revealing things to me through the word and why David was called a man after God's own heart or his own heart. You know, when we look into the life of David, he was the least of all, all his brothers. In fact, he was forgotten by his own father and he was hunted, hunted and chased and hunted like a wild animal by King Saul. And that is when Samuel anointed David to be the king of Israel. You know, when we talk about, uh, when we talk about uh, David, Samuel said, but your, Samuel said to uh, king, uh, king Saul, but your kingdom shall not endure. The Lord has sought a man for himself, a man after God, his own heart. And the Lord appointed him as a ruler over his people. First Samuel 13, 14 says this. You know, as we know, as we go through the uh, uh, book of First Samuel, we see Saul as the first king of Israel from the tribe of Benjamin, appoint, uh, anointed by uh, prophet Samuel. You know, he was known for his courage. He was known for his generosity. He was known for his uh, stature. He was uh, known for his striking appearance. However, when we look into his life, his reliance on God did not last long as his throne was established. You know, when Saul and his army were under the attack and uh, he was afraid and instead of waiting for Samuel to arrive to make the burnt offering to God, Saul took the matter into his hands and he started, uh, he st he started offering the burnt offering. And there were several pro problems with him taking taking the action. You know, that of, uh, when we look into it, he received a direct command by Samuel asking him to wait for seven days. But he didn't. He knew the stake of his kingdom dep depending upon his waiting. But he didn't wait. He chose the impatience and distrust in God. 
he probably did not mean purposefully to go against the will of god but it was a, a peer pressure he saw the uh, saw the, uh, saw the army was uh, started scattering and because of the peer pressure he offered the burnt offering <laughs> he chose what it uh, uh, what seemed to be like a prudent thing to do took the matter into his hands and offered a burnt offering and that is where we find uh, uh, prophet samuel coming to him and asking where, where when pointed out he started giving excuses rather than giving uh, taking responsibility of why it, it it should not be done this disobedience of saul was was the beginning of his downfall you know his pride his arrogance his uh, disobedience continued to grow day after day especially after first uh, samuel chapter 15 you know uh, saul would not try to make uh, make up the lack of obedience and trust in god by trying to kill david by uh, making the burnt offering and trying to kill david more than anything else god knew the heart of out of saul and that is why he rejected uh, rejected saul as a king and that is when he said i am i am seeking a man after my own heart samuel confronted uh, confronted uh, saul telling that does uh, does the lord delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as much as obeying the lord to obey is to better than sacrifice to heed is better than fat fatter drums because you have rejected the word of god i have rejected you as a king of israel first samuel chapter 15 verse 22 and 23 says this you know because of his disobedience and against god rejected uh, rejected him as a king because of uh, lack of his uh, lack of his faith refusal to trust god and that is when david was anointed in chapter 16 you know when we look into the life of david and when we when we compare his life with uh, king saul what was different in the life of david when we compare the first king saul you know radically david was the only child who did not have accomplished anything to be the uh, to be the king you know uh, when we look into uh, look into his uh, family history three of his brothers were in the army and uh, and samuel prophesied about the man after god's own heart becoming the king of day uh, king of israel he didn't even know what was happening in his life nevertheless god knew david's heart long before he had any idea about the future that is uh, that is uh, that is there for him nevertheless his life spoke and we could see his heart through the words that he spoke and the life that he lived you know we're going to look into the life of david and why we're going to see why david was called after man uh, uh, man after god's own heart the first thing that we're going to see is his faith you know the faith was tested uh, tested in david when we uh, when we look into first samuel chapter 17 he was trying to con- uh, confront uh, confront goliath goliath was 9 feet 9 uh, feet 9 inches 9 uh, inches tall he was a giant and he was a, a teenage boy but what made david to stand against this uh, this giant when the entire uh, uh, entire israel army was uh, was so frightened and trembling in fear you know that was a faith you know when david uh, when goliath was uh, standing in front of him he was with the sword and the shield yeah. but this fellow was going uh, go, uh, go, going uh, and confronting uh, confronting goliath with a with a uh, with a stone and the sling you know in fact uh, uh, in fact goliath mocked at him are you a dog that uh, that you come to me with a stick and a uh, sling you know the david's response was was very much uh, very much trusting god you come to me with the sword and the shield but i am i am uh, i am coming to you in the name of uh, name of the lord you know the one shot that is uh, th- took a sling and uh, hit on his forehead and uh, this this giant uh, giant slew and david was called, can be called as a giant slayer this giant fell on the ground took his own uh, uh, own uh, sword and cut his head now what made what 
uh, gave uh, Goli- uh, what made uh, what gave david such a such a faith because he knew he has fought against a, uh, against against a lion and a bear he knew that it was not him but it is god who is going to fight the battles for him and in fact that was true in his in, in his life whenever he wanted to go into the uh, go into the wall uh, in the, into the battlefield the first thing that he uh, he did was lord sh- shall i go will you deliver them into my hands that was the first question that uh, that david would ask before uh, walking into uh, stepping into the battlefield and throughout the israel history the the battles are were won not because of the sword and the shield it is because of the hand of god was with them and that faith made david to slay goliath number 2 Dra- david's trust on god you know after david was anointed uh, david was anointed as a king he was chased and hunted like a wild animal by uh, by king saul he was chased and hunted like a wild animal you know most of his life as a uh, history uh, history says he spent most of his the, the, those 15 years in en gedi it it is a oasis that he found most of his life is spent there but twice when we look into first samuel chapter 20, 24 and uh, 24 and uh, uh, chapter 24 verse uh, uh, 3 4 uh, 4 5 and 6 and uh, for chapter 26 verse uh, 8 8 to 11 we see twice uh, david got uh, got a chance to kill uh, uh, king uh, kill uh, king saul twice he got a chance but he spared his life but he spared his life you know he uh, david had the respect for his king spared his life twice when david had the opportunity to kill him uh, and abishai said uh, abishai said i'll not strike him twice i just what one trust i will trust him to uh, pin him to the ground you know david's response was very very uh, very very uh, different you know don't destroy him who can lay the ha- lay the hand on the god's anointed and be guiltless yes saul was hunting hunting him uh, like a wild animal because david knew god has anointed him as a king over israel and he waited and trusted in the lord and he knew that he cannot raise uh, raise his hand against the god's anointed though how how his life is is his how saul's like king saul's life is div, uh, is is his own his own problem with god that his relationship with god is totally different it doesn't matter to david let god do the judging and that is not my uh, my, my job to do david trusted in the lord david knew that god has declared him as a next king but unlike saul, uh, saul he didn't take uh, t- uh, take the matter in his, in his own hands he waited for saul to be removed from the throne rather than taking the matter in his own hands because he trusted god number 3 david's humility you know after uh, after uh, king saul was uh, uh, saul died uh, died in the battle in uh, first samuel the last chapter he fell on his sword and uh, and he killed himself he was badly wounded he asked his armor bearer to uh, run through this uh, uh, take, uh, take this sword and run through him but the armor bearer was uh, was uh, was uh, was scared he took his own sword and fell, fell, out, uh, fell on it and died and david was anointed as a king uh, king over israel and he took the throne and after the ark of the covenant was brought uh, brought into uh, brought into jerusalem it was lying in the tent and david said here here i live in the uh, live in the house of sirs but the uh, uh, but the ark of the covenant is there in the tent i want to build the temple that god said your uh, your hand has blood uh, uh, your hand has uh, shed so much of blood you will not build the temple for me but your son will but if you 
if you listen to my commandments and follow it wholeheartedly i will establish your throne forever and that is it that is a promise that was given to david the only thing god expects is 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 is, is obedience wholehearted obedience you know is one of one of the important aspects that we find uh, find here is prophet nathan is coming and uh, coming to david and telling him that uh, he will not build uh, build the temple but rather he is he is telling that your uh, your kingdom will be established forever your throne will be established forever and that is when he walks into the uh, walks into his prayer room and uh, bows down before god and tells who are my sovereign lord or my what my family has done that you have brought me this far he is a king of israel ruling the 12 tribes of israel he was a shepherd boy with behind uh, uh, behind a few a uh, few sheep what is that he has to do with uh, with the kingship but god made him as a king but he did not forget what how where he came from the humble beginning who am my sovereign lord and what my family has done that you brought me this far he humbled himself before god because he knew his throne was established by god not by his word not by power not by might at this point david uh, david was known for him in success in everything that he has put uh, put uh, put, uh, put, uh, put his hand into it he has never took the credit for himself right from the uh, right from the first battle against uh, uh, goliath till this moment 15 years has gone already and after the throne has been established it has been 7 years is already gone and he's right there standing in uh, standing in the uh, in the palace sitting in the presence of god telling that lord that you are you are the one i'm nothing that humbleness made david to be called a man of the god's own heart number 4 david's integrity firstly we saw david's faith number 2 david's trust number 3 david's humility and number 4 it's david's integrity you know when we turn to second samuel chapter 12 he had the worst uh, worst things of his life happened there you know david admitted admitted his wrong the moment uh, prophet nathan confronted him after he committed uh, adultery with bathsheba at the end of his end of his reign and that is one thing the moment uh, prophet nathan told that you are the man he said i have sinned i have sinned he did not tell it is because of because i walked or walked on the walked on the balcony and i saw this and because of which all these things happened he didn't come up with, come up with reasons as king saul did he said i have sinned the moment he he uh, he heard that you are the man absent and the second part but uh, that stood out uh, stood out for me is in second samuel chapter 24 excuse me hmm. at the end of his end of his reign david, uh, david ordered joab to uh, take census of fighting men throughout uh, uh, throughout the land of israel from dan to bersheba you know joab joab uh, Jo, uh, job made a, a serious objection in walking god nevertheless his objection was overruled because uh, david was a king 9 months and 20 days later job com- comes back to the uh, uh, com- comes back to the palace and tells that that there are so many so much of men who can handle uh, weapons and that is where and that is where david was seized with remorse A little later in the chapter we find a prophet gad coming to the, uh, coming to david and telling that god is giving you three punishments three years of famine in the land three months of fleeing before the enemies and three days of plague 
david said it is better it is better to fall in the ha- fall into the hands of god and he said and he said let me fall in the hands of god and 70000 people died from dan to bersheba on the day when this was happening he saw the hand of uh, hand of god was falling uh, falling on the people he saw the hand of god falling on the people he said when the, when he saw the angel of the lord was striking the people down he said lord i have sinned i am the shepherd i have done wrong but these are sheep let your hands fall on me and my family he took responsibility for what he has done let your hands fall on me and my family i have sinned i am the shepherd i am the leader but these are sheep the david stood for his integrity at at all the times this is one of the many times where where david took the responsibility of telling telling that i have sinned but david uh, david stood with the heart of integrity at all the times especially when he he was confronted by uh, confronted of any sin the moment he, when somebody pointed out when the prophets pointed out him he said i have sinned it is my responsibility i am i am the one uh, i am the shepherd it's just because he he stood for his integrity he was called after man, uh, man after god's own heart and the last one we're going to see is david's worship you know david is known for his worship he is called the psalmist 77 of the 150 psalms was written by david and most of these psalms were written uh, written during the time of distress most of the times and especially when we look into psalms 32 and psalms 51 it is uh, psalms 51 has the heading telling that it is uh, after prophet nathan confronted him he cried out to god and similarly in uh, in uh, in psalms 32 is one, is believed that it is written uh, just after uh, after the confrontation you know in psalm 32 he writes he writes be glad and glad in the lord and rejoice you righteous ones shout for joy all you have all you who are upright in heart he realized his righteousness did not come uh, come from his actions he did not uh, he realized it he realized that it came from uh, came from his love and submission to god it is not because of his own righteousness because the scripture very clearly says our righteousness of filthy rags david was a man of god's own heart is because he demonstrated his faith and committed uh, committed to follow christ uh, follow god david was uh, david david never stopped worshiping god any point of time the only thing that uh, that he knew is to be in the presence of god and to worship him you know when we look into the life of david he was uh, david's faith stood out in his life when he confronted uh, goliath david's trust in the lord when he was chased and hunted like uh, like a wild animal by king saul number 3 his humility who are my sovereign lord and what my family has done you have brought me this far number 4 his integrity taking responsibility of his sins number 5 david's worship you know as we conclude there is one thing that that is uh, that uh, stood out in the life of david he demonstrated his faith at all times he was committed to uh, committed to follow the lord at all times his faith was tested he he has failed but he saw 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 god's forgiveness many times david david psalms were full of heartaches and even questioning god why these things are happening in his life 
but he has never stopped worshiping God at any point of time. You know, David life or not only shows that why he was called after man, man a man after God's own heart, but it also shows his characteristics. Shows it displays his character. As we close, David's love for God's law was seen clearly in his life. You know, man of the God's own heart is not an easy easy task. It's not an, uh, just a statement. It is not just a statement. It is something that God felt. If God can give a certificate of a man of my own heart. David's role David's role is given as a role model for us to be called uh, called as people of a uh, man of his own heart you know many men not face the same giant what uh, Goliath fa- uh, what David faced many men not go through the same uh, same uh, same heartache what David went through but still the challenges that we face the trials that we go through the valleys that we walk and the mountains that we stand can we praise and thank god for him can we worship him as we uh, uh, as david did can we hold on to the integrity that has, as he uh, held do we have uh, do we have the faith like david these are the questions that we, uh, that we need to ask ourselves this, uh, this morning people we need to analyze our life and why we cannot be called or why we have to be called man up to his own heart. every eye closed every head bowed we need a heartfelt submission to god to be called a man of his own heart lord thank you for speaking to us this morning lord help us to have the faith to trust in you and to humble ourselves in front in your presence and to take responsibility of what we have done and to worship you at all times Lord Jesus like David did thank you for speaking to us this morning Lord Jesus help us Lord to practice and to prepare ourselves to be called people after your own heart be with us and strengthen us Lord take control the rest of the time we give it in your hands in jesus name i pray amen